Hello. Good evening. Welcome to RBG. We're going to get this uh, show on the road because we got a lot of discussion and talk that we want to achieve tonight. Thank you for coming tonight. I'm just kicking it off and I'll be passing it over to our chair, brand new chair, Cliff Carson, who's over here. He'll be bringing some uh, remarks for you. Um, and, uh, and we'll be introducing our, our master planners. And I apologize for not enough chairs, but this was an open house, so it was supposed to be walking around and seeing the panels, but we, I hope you're okay for a few minutes. We'll be doing a lot of talking and walking around, so we won't be sitting long, so just to let you know. All right? So with that, as I mentioned, Cliff Carson, just this afternoon, became our new chair. So congratulations, Cliff, and welcome to you. Well, I think that's congratulations. But it is an exciting time, isn't it? Thank you, Mark. And good evening to everybody here in the room with us tonight. And also to those who are taking advantage of our live streaming for tonight's event. So some of them are staying at home to watch the Raptors game and also watch the live streaming. It's a great honor to have been elected chair of Royal Botanical Gardens, two hours in the making of the board of directors. And I look forward to working with Mark and other board members in what I expect will be an important year in RBG's continued success. Let me introduce to you the members of Royal Botanical Gardens Board of Directors. You've already met me, Cliff Carson, uh, newly elected chair. Keith Scott, where are you, Keith? I know you're here. Keith Scott is the vice chair. David Conrath, I know you're here, David. There we are over there. Councillor Kelvin Galbraith, no, he's not here tonight. Uh, Peter Hargrave, there we go, thank you, Peter. And Francis Neufeld, who is president of the Volunteers. And Guy Shepard, Guy, you're here, I know. Thank you, Guy. We also have regrets from Kevin Brady, Patrick Dean, who is president and vice chair of McMaster, and Councillor Lloyd Ferguson of the city of Hamilton, and Ruth Lee, who is our past chair. That makes up your board of directors. Before I start uh, with my remarks, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the rich history of indigenous people of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Huron-Wandat nations on these lands. In particular, the Mississaugas have the uh, Credit First Nation and the Six Nations of the Grand River Territory. Royal Botanical Gardens is a registered charitable organization whose mission is to dedicate our expertise in horticulture, conservation, science, and education to connect people, plants, and place for the purpose of nurturing and preserving healthy, growing life on our planet. We are Canada's largest botanical garden, preserving and protecting over 2,400 acres of natural lands, and 300 acres of cultivated gardens. These lands include environmentally sensitive habitats that are home to over 50 species of at-risk plants and animals, in the middle of one of the country's fastest growing urban centers. RBG is a leader in environmental education, a major tourist, wedding and event destination, and a great place to do business. Work here is undertaken by a diversely skilled and passionate team of full-time, part-time, and seasonal staff, and an ever-growing group of dynamic, enthusiastic volunteers. The Royal Botanical Gardens generates roughly two-thirds of its annual revenues. Community support makes the difference and allows us to undertake this important work in your community. Support comes through funding from Ontario Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport, Region of, Ham uh, Region of Halton, City of Hamilton, your personal donations, memberships to RBG, and through thousands of volunteers' hours dedicated to various projects each year. It is now our privilege to share with you the, accomplice the accomplishments you have made possible in 2018. The year started with Frogs, the exhibition, a family-friendly experience that showcased 17 species of frogs from around the world 
as well as local species found at RBG wetlands and demonstrated the roles they play in sustaining a healthy environment. Between January 20th and April 15th, the Camilla and Peter Del Glees atrium was filled with 50,000 inquisitive families. RBG's 2018 theme, Color Comes Alive, really hit its stride with the arrival of spring. And from then on, visitors were treated to a season of vibrant color and experiences as horticultural attractions were accentuated by numerous family events, culinary experiences, and educational programming. The first day of summer coincided with the grand opening of the new Rose Garden, following a very significant rejuvenation. This innovative and sustainable garden embraces modern practices in horticulture while boasting a brilliant new design. The garden addresses the challenges of climate change and disease while limiting maintenance and pesticide use. Carefully selected roses, along with beautiful companion perennials, create a healthy ecosystem with significant emphasis on careful plant selection. Over 2,500 new roses are Ontario climate hardy. We are proud to say that just last week, RBG received Sustainable Hamilton Burlington's 2018 Environmental Initiative Award for the environmentally sustainable design choices of, and operation of the Rose Garden Rejuvenation Project. RBG was a summertime destination for arts and culture with the return of the Garden Music Nights concert series in Henry Park and Shakespeare at the Rock Garden. New additions to the celebrated Dan Laurie International Sculpture Collection and two successful trial concerts in the Arboretum. In November and December, family favorite holiday traditions rounded out the year with a full program of activities further establishing RBG as top destination for families to experience the magic of the holiday season. As well, RBG exceeded its three-year goal of 1,000 volunteers. RBG volunteers now include over 1,100 community members who contribute their time and expertise to help make RBG the best it can be. Not only has the number of volunteers grown, but RBG has been able to substantively diversify this volunteer base to better reflect the community we all call home. Volunteers come from all walks of life. Over 21 different languages are spoken amongst our RBG volunteers. They bring new perspectives, fresh ideas, and, pa and perhaps most importantly, a passion for Royal Botanical Gardens. They include over 150 youth volunteers. Volunteers make such a positive impact at the gardens, we really couldn't do great work, the great work we do without their support. And we are excited for what the future will bring as we continue to grow this amazing community program. I would like to personally thank all RBG volunteers for their much appreciated and essential support. Overall attendance to the gardens in 2018 increased by 6.4%, and revenue targets were achieved with increases in general admission and membership revenues. RBG membership has grown to over 19,000 individual members. RBG revenues and expenses vary each year, depending on sources such as donations, grants, and deferrals, but the overall story in 2018 was a positive one. Now, fully audited financial statements for 2018 are available this evening. I believe they're right at the desk, just on the other side of that screen. And they also can be found online at rbg.ca. All the while, RBG staff continue to focus on core mandate mandated activities, providing unique educational experiences through five garden areas while maintaining 2,400 acres of environmentally sensitive natural lands. We do this not only to awaken people to plants, beauty, and diversity, and necessity, but also to serve as a beacon for an increasingly urgent movement to preserve plant species and habitats, 
and by extension, our planet. In 2018, our green team subcommittee with consultation of staff across all departments created RBG's Climate Change Resiliency Plan, identifying actions which will mitigate and adapt RBG to the impacts of climate change. This three-year plan will help ensure we consider the predicted climate change conditions in Hamilton Burlington in our planning decisions and that we focus on action in areas where our organization is most vulnerable. We are already at the halfway point in 2019 and with much more planned, we are still confident the weather will cooperate and RBG will enjoy another successful year. Of course, there is still much work to be done to ensure Royal Botanical Gardens continues to inspire and grow, not only this year, but for generations to come. Our senior management team, together with our board of directors, key staff and volunteers, are building a framework that ensures the success of Royal Botanical Gardens for decades to come. We are completing a strategic plan that will position us to enter the next decade aim to achieve greater success in four key areas, providing a positive legendary guest experience, ensuring financial sustainability, providing environmental leadership, and ensuring a high standard of governance and leadership. Through this process, several key components took place. The board completed an assessment of its governance and board effectiveness and formally agreed to a path forward, now implemented. Although exciting development in 2018, another, sorry, exciting development in 2018 that involved staff, volunteers, and advisors was an envisaging exercise that helped us create a competitive story, or comprehensive storyline for RBG that will be incorporated in everything we say and do here at RBG. We are now using this storyline to help guide the master planning initiative you will learn about this evening. To provide further details on how this will steer RBG's future, I will now turn it back to our CEO, Mark Runciman. Thank you, and thank you for your ongoing support of Royal Botanical Gardens. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Cliff. It is wonderful to see so many people out here tonight, and I do realize that 910 is tip off. So uh, not to put any pressure on uh, Drew. But, uh, it's the, it's, I got a few things to say too to follow up with uh, close remarks and I'll try to get through them quickly so we can get on to the important part of the, the evening. It is the support and input from our community this past year that allowed Royal Botanical Gardens to accomplish much of what Cliff has highlighted. And, is with, and it will be the support of the community that will carry us into the future and help RBG to achieve the ambitious goals we are sharing with you this evening. So thank you for taking time to join us to share on our accomplishments and take an active role in RBG's future. Tonight's event is the culmination of a, a few large-scale initiatives from our strategic plan. The goal of this plan is to emerge as an elite organization in providing legendary guest experiences to become more financially sustainable and take leadership in environmental stewardship and education locally, provincially, nationally, and internationally. Building from this plan, we initiated the creation of the Royal Botanical Gardens Strategic Storyline, a comprehensive internal reference document containing the key elements of RBG's story. This exciting exercise created the framework of an enduring vision of the world as seen by RBG, a vision that is achievable and worth achieving, and one that we can share with our community members and supporters. A world in which everyone is awake to the beauty, diversity, and necessity of plants, and from that consciousness, more actively works together to protect and preserve plant species and habitats, and by extension, our planet. In everything it, do, it, do, it is and does, RBG represents the coming together of people, place, and plants. And in this coming together, there is an opening to a deeper awareness of ourselves, of our particular place on Earth, and ongoing even further, of our role as protectors of our planet and stewards of the environment. For eight decades, Royal Botanical Gardens has connected people to the plant world. We do this not only to awaken people to plants' beauty, diversity, and necessity, 
but also to serve as a beacon for an increasingly urgent movement to preserve plant species and habitats. RBG lands include the World Biosphere Reserve by UNESCO, and RBG plays a vital role in this region, protecting and preserving green space to improve the ecosystem from Lake Ontario to the Niagara Escarpment, ensuring a balanced relationship between people and nature, and connecting natural spaces where wildlife can thrive. Within this eco ecosystem, RBG also manage, manages Project Paradise, one of the largest freshwater marshland restoration pro projects of its kind in North America. We encourage environmental stewardship by providing meaningful, meaningful and diverse learning experiences that connect people with the wild and cultivated plant world. These experiences find life in everything we do, from horticultural displays and interpretive programming, school and youth programs, to courses, hikes, special events, and lectures. We work with other organizations to connect children, youth, and families with nature and ongoing and meaningful ways. This work has already made great impact in your community and beyond. We know there's even more to accomplish. In an age of accelerating habitat loss, the rush of humans to urban centers, climate change, and threats to, bio to biodiversity, there has never been a more critical time to turn our attention to the plant kingdom. Urban lives are increasingly complicated, and nature provides the vital yet basic needs for, for humanity. RBG is a sanctuary where people can find refuge, peace, and recreation, and for those who seek it, a plant education experience like no other. With 2,700 acres of cultivated gardens, natural lands, and an arboretum, all together in a unique and ecologically sensitive location with a large urban center, the value of RBG is significant, and we are in a unique position to bring this to the world stage. It is time for RBG to realize our full potential, to dream big and build on our successes in education, science, conservation, and horticulture, so we can leave a legacy for future generations that responds to mounting environmental threats. In this spirit, we are embarking on a 25-year master planning exercise that will provide the roadmap for Royal Botanical Gardens to ensure future generations will connect with plant life in a unique environment, fostering awareness and care for a world that is under increasing ecological threat. RBG aims to instill in everyone we reach a deeper awareness of themselves, their place on this planet, and their role as protectors and stewards of the environment. Royal Botanical Gardens Master Plan will be a forward-looking, long-term policy document with a planning outlook of 25 years. The plan will identify projects for the first five years to address immediate needs. The master plan will be the roadmap to achieving RBG's goals, namely to build the financial strength and independence to serve our future and to enhance our infrastructure and amenities for the people who are here today and for new, more diverse audiences from local, national, and international markets. We will do this by creating new revenue streams and leveraging and enhancing our existing land use plan. Signif significant fundraising efforts will be required and finalized through the planning process. At the heart of this plan is the critical need to nurture and protect our ecosystems on a local, national, and global scale. While the need to achieve financial sustainability is clear, RBG exists to affect real and positive change in how humanity interacts with our environment. We pledge to take full advantage of our resources, knowledge, and reputation, and move the world toward actively, actively caring for our planet. Our work is urgent, but requires deep and lasting commitment in perpetuity. To this end, we invite all those who share our love of plants and our understanding of what is at stake to join forces with us, to celebrate and to save what, what must be humanity's most important relationship. As a not-for-profit charitable organization, your support is critical in achieving this goal. Together, we can carry RBG and its mandate onto that world stage with the fundamental goal of saving our planet. To initiate the uh, planning process, RBG has been working with Collier's project leaders as our project manager. We have Les Cam, somewhere in the audience, there he is at the back. Uh, and that led us to engaging MT planners, an internationally renowned firm specializing in landscape architecture, urban design, and environmental planning as our master planners. The MT planners team is committed to the process of creating environments needed to sustain humanity in the 21st century and shares RBG's perspective that we are a unique environment with a special connection to people, their communities, 
and their future generations who will all be the benefactors of a healthier environment. I am pleased to introduce to you Drew Wensley. Drew has been with Empty Planners for 18 years and is the firm's CEO. He has transformed the landscape and planning group into an internationally esteemed, innovative, and award-winning firm. With strong focus on a, on a natural systems approach to design, his projects range in complexity, scale, and are developed with an unyielding commitment to sustainable, resilient, and socially transformative results. I think we picked the, wrong, the right team. Today, Drew is contributing to some of the largest and most significant city building and environmental restoration initiatives around the world, including work in the Middle East, Asia, and North America. These projects share a common goal, to repair and enhance the natural systems that support us all. Please welcome Drew and his team, who will explain the next steps of the master planning process and facilitate this evening's information session. Thank you very much. Thank you. What an honor to be with you tonight. Um, and thanks for, we'll get you home to the Raptors game, I promise. Um, I think I should start by saying what, what I'm going to take you through is 15 minutes of the next 12 months. And we're, what we're going to talk about is the structure of the master plan. And I think that's a really important piece for you guys to understand the process that we're going to go through. Of course, it needs to be flexible. It needs to bring in all of your incredible stories and it needs to be forward thinking. And on this side of the room, that's what you're looking at. And we'll get through this in about 15 minutes, and then what we do wanna do is listen to you. And we wanna to dream together on that side of the room with the offerings, programs, outcomes, and let's dream together about the future. So let's look at the 2,700 uh, acres that Mark was describing. We know that this is more than just a garden. What an incredible landscape, and we won't use the word fragmented. That's, uh, that's off our vocabulary from now on. We're gonna use this as an asset. The master plan must think about how we connect these environments, and this is an ecology and a system that connects escarpment to coots and obviously to the Great Lakes. And Mark was pointing out the importance of this environment to not only Hamilton, Burlington, but this is going to be a beacon for the world on how cities engage with their environment. So in this continuing legacy that Mark was describing, a master plan that looks forward thinking and thinks of tomorrow must recognize the work of today and the past. And that's what our team, and you'll meet them in, in a few minutes, are endeavoring to do. We're building a timeline and an understanding of how we got here. And we realize that this is a very different place today. And how is it evolving and what are the pressures that it's under? So we have to think about where we're going together and, and dream big, as Mark describes. So in terms of uh, the lasting vision, um, this, this slide is really important because it builds off of what has been done in the past, but it recognizes the inherent value of this place today. That the currency of RBG is, is very incredibly priceless at this point in history. That our complex lives today, as we immerse ourselves into these environments, we are healthier for being in this place. And we'll talk a bit about that in, in the coming minutes. So that need for refuge, as we look and as we embrace new technology and building sciences, materials, a lot of people are asking, what do we need less of? Obviously, we need to deal with waste, uh, less carbon, how to harvest and, and uh, use resources efficiently. We focus on what do we need more of, and what we need more of in every city around the world is places like the RBG. Within the region, we're expanding to about 12 million people by 2031. Now, recent uh, news events tell us that these population gains are coming with inherent challenges, and population growth is going to expand the urban pressures that threaten RBG and its edges. Mark was describing our work around the world, and yes, we've been in the Middle East and China and uh, Central America recently. Um, 
all of these places are suffering from the same challenges. Nobody's unique. Flooding, fire, drought. Climate has changed, and it's impacting cities around the world. We've, been, uh, we've had the privilege of trying to address some of these challenges, but it's so nice to, to work in your backyard and bring it home because we are not immune here. And you can see that the recent events between uh, 2012 and 2018, we have ice storms and flood, and then significant severe droughts in the, in the middle of the summer. So how do we prepare RBG for this? We see these problems around the world and we recognize they're shared by all. And this is an important slide to me because this connects us to the next generation. And I think what we're endeavoring to do at the beginning, this is the start of a master planning process that we wanna hear your voices, your stories, your aspirations, because you are talking directly to distant generations through this process. This is a bridge. In order to uh, look differently at the world, we look through a different and very optimistic lens. We see the joy that the natural world can bring, and that's what you guys have in spades. The RBG represents that, that refuge to our complex urban life. And once we get here, we become different. We've noticed and we've heard the stories recently from everybody engaging with us on a trail. They say hi to you. In, in downtown Toronto, people's heads are down and they're going to whatever their destination is. At RBG, everybody's heads up, they're looking around and they're engaging not only, not only with their environment but with each other. And that's so special. So we know that the currency is, is priceless, but with that comes tremendous responsibility. And the master planning process that we'll go through, and I'll just take a moment just to build the narrative of the master plan with the idea that building inherent value and building off of your existing assets is a real challenge. And it's a challenge that we, we really need to think carefully about and examine and do the tests that Les and I were talking about. What gains are we going to make uh, step by step through the process? Our process looks at uh, the regional understanding. So you'll see a series of maps on these boards. And what we're doing in the early stages, we're building a regional understanding of the watershed, the waterways, the urban growth patterns, the forest coverage, and the soil index, and how that affects the heat island of Hamilton and your air quality. We think of that through the scale as well of the regional system right down to your community and right down to your bloodstream. A master plan that ignores how you feel and what your body chemistry is doing when you're in this environment is not complete. We really have to understand the impact that this place has on our biochemistry. And that is a powerful, powerful tool. So with that, we understand Lake Ontario is at record highs. Uh, we've seen regional and local flooding, and what we are doing with our process is understanding the systems as it's historically the seasonal change. Uh, you can see September 2018 all the way through uh, a seasonal year. Now this is very unique because we're in a very challenging year in terms of flooding. That Red dashed line is the 100-year flood line, the catastrophic flood event, and we're there. So what this is telling us is, and how we use this information is, when we start dreaming on the other side of the room about what RBG represents in 25 years and what it will become in the 21st century, this is our moment to address these challenges. We can't just blindly go uh, building we must understand how building within this environment and enhancing its system will impact the seasonal quality, but also uh, the 100-year the vision. We continue to go further and really analyze the systems in section. So we uh, and our team are looking at how all of these elements come together to perform within this environment. So our interaction with the city and its, its urban edge and stormwater management systems. All of this we play out uh, and through scenarios to really understand and test the ideas. That's what a master plan is supposed to do. 
It's not supposed to be a document that you hand off and say, here you go, go ahead and build it. It's a live, living, breathing document because this is a live, living, breathing place and we have to think that way. We dive deeper into the assessment package. So what we're going to be doing in the next several weeks and months is diving deep into the analysis. RBG has incredible data sets that we're harvesting and learning from. This is like uh, a gold mine for, for what we do. And, but we can, we can leverage that and think differently about how we, we test the land assessment and really think about how these systems tie in together. Out of that assessment comes critical needs. And of course, any master plan or any planning exercise is gonna define priority projects. The critical needs are very important because they define what we need to balance and what we need to inject new life into, maybe what we need to remove from the system, and then maybe what we actually have to build into the system. So this is gonna be an ongoing process and you're just seeing process diagrams, our heavy lifting is yet to be done. So this is where your stories come in. Let's talk about the aspirations for a minute. What will RBG become in the 21st century? And we really want to think uh, this through with you in terms of outlining the goals and aspirations and the objectives of the master plan, not only for today, but for tomorrow. And that's an important process that it's not only about spaces and places, but it's about the feelings and the emotion of place and what you guys are tying into here because it's, it's that connection to this landscape that is the true, I think, asset. Every place we have gone within RBG, we are hearing stories and these stories are incredible. Today, I heard of a couple celebrating their 56th wedding anniversary here today. They come every year because they met at Laking Garden. That was their first date. And this place became so important to them that they've come back every year. All of their kids have been married here. And that's a legacy moment for them. And so I asked, what do you need more of? What would you do in the master plan? And he said, more, I want more. And he wanted more for his, his grandchildren and his great grandchildren. And so that, that was a great story. And, there's many more. So throughout the master planning process, we're gonna be testing mechanisms. We're looking at design strategies, initiatives, and actions together with your aspiration list. What do we wanna to achieve together? Now let's test that. What do we need to do in terms of defining new opportunities of engagement, new outreach programs? You have the story in spades, you have the place. Let's celebrate it with the world and bring the world to your doorstep. In all of the, the planning process, we talk about the performance gains. Now, it can't be just one element. There's no single bullet fix to any problem uh, suffering at RBG or any uh, environment within the urban complex. We are looking for social gains, environmental gains, and certainly economic ones that sustain a prosperous future for RBG. And all of those can come down to how we feel in a place, how it's performing, not only for you and I, but for a city. And that's what I think uh, RBG and Coots Paradise is doing for Hamilton and Burlington. We were asked today, uh, just earlier on this, this evening, about thinking through scales and how what we are going to be doing together is maybe starting at the community scale, right in your backyard, but it'll have a ripple effect to the national stage. And so how can we think of ourselves as RBG as a regional influencer? The education programs, the science, and the outreach of that science and what it means to the future, that is gonna be something that we will spend a lot of time talking to you and bringing forward in the coming weeks and months. We all have to think about the tangible outcomes of this process. And we've said before, we'll say it again, it doesn't end at the delivery of a master plan or even the implementation of a fantastic new amenity or garden space. This has to be a document that outlives us all. And when we think about uh, the way that we're sort of packaging this and writing to future generations, 
I would love us to think about the way that we're talking to the next generation. These are the challenges we were facing. This is the way that we were thinking about those challenges. We tried to find the right solutions. Now go find yours. And so in all of this, I think with the, the vision and the values of RBG and the last 80 years, the momentum is, is gaining and that conversation to the next generation will be so rich and robust through this process. So we're going to break up and we're going to stand and talk. Uh, and this is the meat of what we wanted to do with you tonight, because when we talk about the offerings RBG, uh, we want to dream together. We want to say to you, and we have several questions. What do you see for the future? What do you want to, to see built or enhanced? What do you need connected? How long do you need to walk to a space to then feel that emotional connection? All of these things of infusing art and culture and you know, the levels of engagement into the place. The programs are many uh, at the RBG and they offer incredible diversity in programs through every age group. Uh, you know, there's many things that we want to talk to you about. Seasonal quality and seasonal engagement for RBG in the future. How can we bring people here throughout every month? And how can we make those journeys really incredible? And the levels of engagement. Maybe for those of us uh, that are so able-bodied, we can get into the, the the depths of the trail network and we can engage with places and spaces in the corners of RBG's property, but there's a lot of people that need this that perhaps can't penetrate as deep into the property. An interesting idea about the live feed. You know, if, if we were to have a camera out there right now and watching the clouds and the birds, listening to that sensory perception, and that went into a... Uh, a home or uh, you know, a facility that people couldn't get here, it would feed them because it makes them so much healthier when they engage with their environment. We want to think about how we can go beyond just the environmental realm, how we can penetrate through technology and bring people together through the RBG's narrative and the great offerings that you have. And of course, when we talk about architecture and elements like this fantastic facility of the place, connected to the landscape and rich with uh, stories and, and connection. We're going to be asking you about the immersive quality. I, I really want to hear your stories about how you feel about this place. You'll have history. You'll have a narrative. We have to bring that forward because we have to teach people about the, that importance of the immersive quality of our landscapes and perhaps even push what RBG is doing here into the cities. So instead of just thinking about your boundaries as an urban edge, perhaps we can bleed what you have here into our cities. That would be a great, great moment for Hamilton and Burlington. So what are the spaces and places that you dream of within this environment? And I know you can't read a lot of that, but let's get over to the board and let's talk about the spaces and places, the structure that we need to make all of these great stories come alive, both now and the future. So with that, we're going to ask a couple of questions. So we need words and phrases that describe your connection to RBG. And we've set up this, uh, I believe it's on uh, the website, and you can connect to it. And we've got people that will explain how to connect to this um, when, you, when you engage with them on that side of the room. Um, but really, what we, want it, what we want to gain is your understanding of what this place means to you and obviously where you see RBG going in the future. So many issues, many challenges that we are facing together, fantastic opportunities. So this is the moment that we invite you to get up and let's talk about and dream about RBG in 25 years. So thank you.
Okay, as Drew has mentioned, this is where you start working with us. So uh, that's the end of the formal part. So please grab a coffee, circle uh, the boards. There'll be staff. We have, I should have introduced my management team. They're all here. They got these tags on. Uh, they're going to join uh, Drew and his team, and uh, we want to hear what you have to say. Please enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you for coming again.